Okay, well, I'll give a couple on John Enoch. Uh, of course, you're all familiar with the challenges of his birth and coming here with Gene to uh, have the uh, various operations. One of the things that uh, people maybe don't realize is that that first operation was just sort of a temporary fix. I mean, it was a good fix, but it mm -hmm. didn't solve the didn't solve the problem and they had to wait until he was about two and a half years old after we got back to have the main operation and uh, back in those days they didn't have all the pip, uh, drugs and so forth that they have today and Dr. Hatch who did the operation said he has to just be absolutely perfectly still because it's such a delicate tiny little thing that they were doing and so they gave him the maximum amount of morphine, which was the main tranquilizer, uh, painkiller type thing to hold him still at the time. And the operation was successful. They, he said he was just perfectly still and they did it good. But then when it was over with, of course he hurt, <laughs> obviously, but uh, Dr. Hatt said, now the main problem is not gonna be the hurting, the main problem is his withdrawal from the morphine. And so for oh, several days, we had to tie his two hands to the crib this way and his two feet to the other or so he was just stretched out that way. And that was to prevent him from pulling his, hmm. you know, pulling the things off. Tubes and, things. And, and we just, we, they told us it was going to be really hard, but it was the best thing to do. And for two or three days, he just screamed at the top of his voice. And we just had to sit there and just kind of hold him. And every once in a while, he would go to sleep for just a little bit, and then he'd wake up. And, and it wasn't so much the pain as it was the morphine withdrawal. Wow. But they said, it'll be, a, it'll be, that's the right, that's the only way to do it. And so after, it was not, not a week, but it was several days. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, and then he finally, apparently it got out of his system. Mm -hmm. uh, although it did leave a, an after effect in the sense that uh, when he went to a dentist, when he was not, uh, he might have been 10 or something like that, and they gave him a shot of, Novocaine, if that's what they used in those days. And he just went through the roof again. Because <laughs> apparently he still had tiny little uh -huh. semblances of that left. But anyway, that was wow. just kind of a... And then uh, before... Let's see. Yeah, that was at about two and a half when he was only two years old. So that was before the operation. Mm -hmm. I had promised Queen Mataajo that we would bring him back uh, because she wanted to do a birthday celebration for him. But of course, in Tonga, the big birthday is number one mm -hmm. and he wasn't there. So she made me promise to bring him back for his second birthday. And so I took uh, Nancy with me and we went down for some regional conferences and so forth and took him there. And he had the, the queen had a big old birthday party for him and it was uh, it was really a it was really a fun thing and then he came home and then we went through all of this that I just described uh, well one of the things that we probably should mention <laughs> since this is for history uh, is the fact of the way his birth was portrayed in the movie it wasn't <laughs> quite exactly the way it, it really happened uh, just for the family to know. <laughs> uh, the uh, movie made a big thing of having uh, the doctor come running in at the last minute. Actually, the doctor came shortly after we arrived at the hospital. And it was but Dr. Nume Tolu. Yeah, Dr. Nume Tolu, a different one than the doctor but. that helped when he was sick. But, but Dr. Uh, Topper was really in Yeah, charge. he was the head doctor there, but the delivering the baby was Dr. Yume Tolu. And he was also a lay preacher in his uh, village in the, 
had this, we went into the hospital on late Saturday night after uh, attending the Ward Relief Society birthday dinner party or dance party they had on Saturday and this was a Sunday morning early and the labor, uh, well, it was interesting as we walked into the pay ward of the hospital, which was the fanciest part of the hospital. Um, it was just an old wood framed home that had been turned into this section of the hospital. John asked, uh, or dad asked where the delivery room was <laughs> and they said, where would you like it to be? There's a table right there. <laughs> so <Or> the floor. <laughs> so I <clears throat> got climbed up and laid down on this, just kind of a like a folding table, like we'd. Mm -hmm. And um, Kesaya did go with me to help rub my back and so forth. Uh, as things went along, and, and you could tell about the conversation with Doctor when they told me. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Nume Tolu said, because it was after, it was getting towards morning now, it had been several hours, and uh, he came, I mean, we visited a lot during the time. He was really good to stay there, and he mm -hmm. says, I think I'd better take off. I'm supposed to give a sermon at uh, the uh, college, the Wesleyan mm -hmm. uh, Minister's College. And uh, uh, what did they call it? Uh, well, anyway, I can't remember right now. But uh, I think it'll be several hours before your wife has the baby. And I have a bicycle, so I'll I'll go down and uh, come back and be in time. And I said, well, how do you know she's? it's going to be a long time and she says oh because most women when they get close they start really yelling and <laughs> screaming because she didn't want any drugs any mm -hmm. pain pills and she's just been very quiet and i says well you don't know my wife i would really appreciate it if you check her one more time before you go and he says oh okay and he my daddy came back and he says, boy, you're right. So she's going to have the baby the next <laughs> half hour or less, you know. And so he stayed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember of uh, telling him after the baby was delivered, and now it was kind of on the edge of his time to get there. I think they call it Siatotai, the, the college that he was mm -hmm. going to, the ministerial college. Yeah, I told Ty how it is. And so, as he was ready to leave, I said, uh, Xiaoxi, his name was Xiaoxi, and you may told him, I just feel so grateful. I just want to give you a special blessing. Would that be all right? And he said, sure, as long as you do it fast, because I've got to get there or I'll be late. And I says, I just bless you that you'll give a wonderful, wonderful sermon because you have done Christ's bidding today. You have helped those in need, and His Spirit will be with you, and you'll give a wonderful sermon. And uh, when he came back, he said, I don't know what it was about your blessing, but that's the best sermon I've ever given. <laughs> <laughs> and the people told me that. So, yeah. so that, <clears throat> we didn't have all the serenading and celebrating. <laughs> well, we did later, but, but not but, then. But no, no one came to the, the hospital to see him. Sunday morning. They did later. But anyway, that's for the record what it was really <laughs> like. There was, <clears throat> of course, a little over a year or so when Johnny was living with his grandparents, in, Saban grandparents, and he had a big brother, John Saban, then, who was about um, 13 or so, I guess. And then when he moved up to Idaho, he had a George. Uh, and George, yeah. George and Gloria were still at home, so as aunts and uncles, um, they they had a chance to also have a little baby brother around for a yeah. while. So that was a nice uh, blessing for them as as uh, young teenagers. 
He was with, just for the record again, he was with your folks for two or three months. So Until October conference, your parents oh, came yeah. down October conference, so from July, August, September, yeah. yeah about three, three months. Through a little over three months. And then with the folks for... So we came home the following summer. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of fun, different little things. Uh, and <clears throat> John was little, uh, let's see, April of 72, he would have been about four, I guess. Uh -huh. And he and Susan were, this was in the Idaho Falls house then, they were having a race sliding down the stairs on their tummies. <laughs> and uh, they both arrived at the bottom at the very same time, and John said, that was a twin, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> 